Good evening. How are you? Evening. Looks like we have a full house. How exciting. And I see little Bob, then I think Maria may be joining us a bit later. See you, Kathy. And who else do we have here? Jerry, you're here. All right. Just getting set. So board members, do you all have the packet that Kathy circulated as well as some draft motions? Everything up here at once. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so I'd like to open the public hearing for this evening for the Zoning Board of Appeals. We have a lot of people on the on the agenda, so we'll just jump right in. And do we happen to have uh, anyone here for 340 Main Street? We have two continued public hearings. Okay, and let me just double check the, yeah, we are, we are after seven, so we're clear. Um, that being the case, just uh, for the benefit of anyone in the audience, these, uh, these have our continued public hearings. We've continued them for a number of meetings. We've had uh, no one in attendance for the last two, I believe. So at this point, I think it's appropriate that we close these and, um, I think we just need to double check procedurally what we need to do, but essentially dismiss them. I don't think we need to dismiss them with prejudice if they want to reapply and come back in front of the board when they have plans to move forward, that's fine, but we just don't need to be carrying these on the agenda uh, going forward. So Madam so, Chair, do you need a motion for that purpose? I think I do, and just I want to double check. Kathy, do you happen to know what procedurally what the uh, appropriate are we just closing and dismissing without prejudice? Is that? Um, that's. I'm not sure whether that, you have to. I don't think you can withdraw them, but. No. Um, I don't know whether you need to deny them or approve them. So we. If we were, since we don't have enough to make a favorable vote on either of either of these, it would be denying them, and we could deny them without prejudice, so that if they want to come back, right, um, within you know, come back once they have plans. I'm, I'm fine with that. I, you know, obviously, and the they, board needs to concur. And Madam Chair, that they would have to initiate the process, the notifications, everything that goes with as if they were starting all over. That is correct. It's been a while. It, it's been a while. I'm, I mean, I'm, I am very hopeful that for this property that they will come up with a proposed tenant or user and some plans that they can bring in front of us and the CPC to move forward, but at this point, um, we've had radio silence for a bit, and I think it makes sense to move those aside. I don't mean to penalize them, so I don't think I would not vote to dismiss with or vote against with prejudice, but simply want to clear the docket. And when they're ready to come back with something fresh, happy to look at it. So just for the uh, clarification, if there's really going to be no positional difference between dismissal and denial, I would offer that dismissal is the cleaner of the two, uh, not to note, but in a matter of law, for example, if the party didn't show up, uh, they wouldn't be found in any way, the court would just dismiss and tell them if they were trying to re revisit it, they'd have to file anew if it was either a matter of complaint or um, petition. So um, I would offer that we should just dismiss without prejudice with an understanding that 
in the event they reapproach that they are obligated to again file as if it knew. Second. And that. it would seem and, and, and not to, but quite frankly, I think that they don't know what they, it could be that they don't know what they're going to do with the properties. And when they file a new, they'd come forward with a better understanding of purpose. Bob, I, th I think that's that's correct. Um, I think that was a motion. Then I believe you you second that. Yes. So uh, I'll All make a full, uh, uh, you make with a regard to formalize it. With regard to 340 Main Street, the special permit permit for use construction slash landscaping made by applicant Jose Thay, uh, I move that uh, the matter be dismissed without prejudice, um, um, and for reasons noted on the record. I'll second. All in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Uh, Finn Raguchi, aye. Jennifer Platt, aye. And, and now we have a second matter also for the same location, special permit for use as auto repair shop, applicant Michael Laws. I don't believe they have been here um, either. So I would move that or move that we make the same motion for this. So for that purpose, um, with regard to the application for 340 Main Street, specifically special permit for, for use, that being an auto repair shop submitted by uh, applicant Michael Laws, um, I move to uh, dismiss the matter without prejudice. And in the event that the party um, wishes to uh, reapproach that uh, as noted on the record, um, it would be with all process and procedures laid out by um, our bylaws. No second. All in favor? Bob Breen, um, aye. Vin Raguchi, aye. Jennifer Platt, aye. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. That moves two things. We have one other continuation that's 172 Park Street, uh, Fleet Boston. The applicant was looking for a variance to upgrade the lighting. We have talked to them twice before, and they were going back to revisit their plans to see if they could do what they had hoped to do without either without a variance from our board or in a way that would have lesser impact on the, both the streets and the neighboring properties. Do we have anyone here for 172 Park Street? Has there been any communication to the uh, town, Kathy? They sent me an email requesting a continuance. Thank you. Well, that's easy. Um, on their request to continue, um, I move that we approve that to move that to next. Um, do they next month? Does that work with them? We need to uh, set up a date. Do you want to set a okay. date for the motion? Yes, here. we do. So looking at, I'm just pulling up a calendar here. Second Tuesday in August would be the 11th. How's Second that? Thursday. Second Thursday, um, sorry. Sure. Uh, that that uh, works for me. Uh, that's, uh, that's fine for me. Maria, that look okay? Yes, thank you. Absolutely. All right. So um, make a motion to, well, actually, they made the request. I would move that we approve their request to continue their hearing until the 11th of August. All good? Thank you. All right. Okay. We have. That was old business, moving on to new business. Um, and we can just tick through these in order. We have an applicant, Cindy Aurora, 475 Park Street. And we have Cindy with us this evening.
If not, then we'll just let's skip this one and move on if we do not have the applicant with us. We can revisit that one at the end. How about for Caroline Road, Mr. Robert Pierce? Good evening, Mr. Chair. Good evening. Glad to have you here. Let's find, is that the right, let me make sure I have the right public hearing notice here. And we will officially open this. Da, 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 da. Okay. A vert, vert, I'd like to open a virtual public hearing. It will be held on Thursday, July 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Robert Pierce. For Caroline Road, North Reading, MA, Map 34, Parcel 12, for Home Occupation Special Permit to run as consultation company per Article 200-42 North Reading Zoning Bylaws. Mr. Pierce, would you tell us briefly what it is you would like to do? So my goal is, is I'm starting up a, a new business where I am consulting with other businesses looking at their business management and how they operate to help them improve in multiple fields from marketing to sales to how they deal with employees and stuff. Um, and I'm gonna be using my desk here, which we're sitting at as my office and potential mailing address. So that's like the extent of it. I just need to be able to have a physical address to be able to mail documents to and sit at. <laughs> Fair enough. That sounds like a typical home office. Do we have anyone from any neighbors or butters who would like to comment or have any questions about your? I do see one that is on the list. I'm not sure if she wants to comment though, or he does. He or she. Uh, so it's the Shrankers. Yeah. So that's that's the reason we're on. We just wanted to know what the extent was. So that sounds. Home office is fine is, with us. Yeah. We're concerned it might be um, more vehicle traffic or something like that. We just didn't know any of the uh, details. Home office. I, I mean, I have one. I do some small time consulting homes. So I have no issues with that at all. All right, and Mr. Pierce, would you confirm for your neighbors the um, no additional commercial no, vehicles? No or... additional traffic. There'll be no clients coming to the house, no employees coming to the house. It's solely I, me, and my vehicle. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. And again, as we tell everyone who's coming in um, in front of our board for home ox special permits, uh, home offices are very common these days. Many of us have them. Uh, and as long as you are not impacting your neighbors, that's that's the goal. It's, as long as it's invisible, um, that is what, what the bylaws are intended to do. And I'm just looking to see here, uh, board members, any any comments or questions for our applicant? Uh, no, it seems, uh, I think, uh, straightforward. <laughs> it's very easily the concerns of the neighbor, especially. So thank you for that. Thank you. Agreed. Um, and do we have a motion here? I think we do. Um, Bob, would you be so kind if you see that Certainly. in your packet, just to, uh, a, with North regard Caroline. to the, with regard to petition of Robert Pierce for Caroline road, North Reading map 34, parcel 12 for a home occupation special permit to run as consultation uh, business and or company uh, pursuant to article 200-42 of the North Reading zoning bylaws. I move to grant uh, the application for the home occupation special permit to Robert Pierce to be used at 4 Caroline Road. Again, map 34, parcel 12 with the following standard conditions, no person other than the residential occupant uh, shall be employed therein for the purpose stated. No more than 300 square feet shall be devoted for use for his, that business oper, op, op, purpose in the home. There shall be no display of goods, wares, signs related to the home occupation visible from the exterior. The special permit for home occupation runs with the applicant and is no way transferable to another either through or by the business. There'll be no customers coming or clients to the premises 
and that the special permit shall be valid for a period of four years pursuant to our bylaws. And I'll second that. Good. All in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Vin Ragucci, aye. I all right thank you very much everyone and Mr. Pierce good luck with your business it, you there's a 20-day appeal period on all special permits and after that you can pick up your permit from the from town hall all right thank you board all right you are most welcome right thank you Mr. and Mrs. Thing. Schranker yes thanks for coming to the meeting yes we do very much appreciate when neighbors of butters come out and either support or voice their concerns. That's why it's a public hearing. So agreed. Thank you for coming and helping us do our job. Next thing I have up is Jeremy Bernardo for 372 Main Street. And a 327. Wonderful. Did I say that backwards? Yeah. Um, we'll get it right this time for sure. Right. But I'd like to open a, a virtual public hearing to be held Thursday, July 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Jeremy Bernardo for a special permit to run a landscaping business located at 327 Main Street, North Reading, MA, MAP 12, parcel 133. And I'm just looking as we scroll through the file. Do we have any, uh, no, no plans here. Special permit for a landscaping business um, and you're back behind Boston Flower Market. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bernardo, can you tell us a little bit about um, your business and what you're hoping to do there? Uh, we're just looking to keep our trucks parked out back. Uh, we do a lot of work with Boston Flower Market. We do a lot of support with them. We buy all of our products from him. Um, so basically, he gave us the opportunity to park our vehicles behind his flower market. Right. That is going to be a, could be a little bit tricky. And I'm going to get Jerry involved here because we have a number of businesses right on Main Street where the issue is... Uh, the parking of vehicles in the highway business district and um, where a, a, lands a, yeah, a landscaping business is allowed and certain vehicles sort of in connection with a landscaping business or a, um, a gardening business would be allowed but just these parking of trucks in and of themselves is problematic. Well, it, it, it is a landscape business. I run it out of there, if that's, is it, is I, I was basically, I'm basically saying that he let me do that because it would benefit him as well. That's why we kind of work hand in hand, but it is, Bernardo Landscapes has been in North Reading for over 10 years. Jerry, can you, can you give us a little um, input on this? Have you talked to this, to the applicant and I, I don't see anything at plans like showing where this would be. Um, I sent you a narrative. You should have a narrative. Oh, here you go. Okay, <laughs> I have your narrative. I was looking for a plan. Let's see. Um, you just sent a violation notice, you said, and they responded. Yep. They responded. And I also uh, I also spoke with uh, Bernardo Landscaping themselves. And they told me that they were going to store their vehicles in the back and they were going to be renting a small area, work out of an office spot from 327 Main Street. Um, I explained to them, you are allowed in the highway business district to have multiple businesses within the same, within the same address, but you need to make sure that your address matches where your vehicles are. Mm -hmm. So is your concern, because I, I, since we do have several applicants here with similar issues, and I, I wanna make sure that we are being, as a board, fair and consistent, is your concern as the zoning enforcement officer, um, simply the storage of vehicles separate from an ongoing or a, a functioning business, or is, um, can you 
our zone, our zoning bylaws, our zoning bylaws do not allow just right, just just storage of vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. You have to have yeah. a business. You have to have a business address there. It also doesn't allow storage of heavy heavy equipment. Um, if you were going to have uh, uh, such as a ten wheel dump truck, that's that that would be considered heavy equipment. I'm not sure what Bernardo Landscaping has. I don't. I didn't see any heavy equipment when I went back there. I did see uh, some smaller equipment. I saw some trailers, um, but it, but in all, it did it it did look did look fairly clean, and I did take some pictures of it, and I think you could see some pictures uh, that I did send as well. So before I, uh, I will I will say. Um, Right, so this, just so I understand, Mr. Bernardo, sounds like you would be, you're, you're renting space there as well for yep. your actual office space. In yeah, my wife, my wife has an office inside of Peter's building, uh, Boston Flower Market. And then we also just run the business out of the back from there. Uh, it's not. I, I think I worded it incorrectly when I said store vehicles, but that's where they are parked at night. So I am running a business out of there, and I do require vehicles to run my business. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I just store them and leave them there. <clears throat> so I think what would be helpful for for me um, is to have some sort of <clears throat> of plot plan, or at least a sketch of the property to show what space you're leasing, um, where the vehicles would be stored, a sort of a just, or where the vehicles are parked that are being used in connection with your business and um, a description of what type of vehicles are there. Because this, I mean, I know we- They're just pickup trucks. Very, okay, okay. Just simple pickup trucks with trailers on the back that go and cut grass. I mean, there's nothing really special to it. Um, other than that, we have lawn mowers and trailers. All right, board members, that, that's some of your, your thoughts and questions on this. We are also, um, we're also a corporation. I'm not sure if it says that on there. I am unsure if I was supposed to pull a business permit and be a corporation at the same time because I am registered with the state. So I am just kind of looking to, for the guidance on what else I'm, I should do as well. And have, have you, you said you've been here, been operating in North Reading for 10 years. Have you been in the same space or is this like a, a, a new? I've been here for, I think, six years. And then before that, I was actually at All Star Fence on Main Street before that. Mm -hmm. It's now Sweet Man, I think. Mm -hmm. So I have six been... years, were you, were you here behind the flower market? Mm -hmm. And I did try to apply years ago for a business permit and they said I didn't need one at the time because I, I created myself into a corporation instead. And I, I went back again and I just said, I'll do the permit, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I just, I wanna make sure that everyone is happy with me being there. Madam Chair, if I may speak, speak on that. you. Please. You don't need a business certificate if you're a corporation, but you still need the permission from the board um, relative to a special permit to operate a landscape business um, out, mm -hmm. out of that location. And that's part of our bylaws. Thank you. Madam Thank Chair. You, Jerry. Yes. I, I, I have a question for Jerry. It's, it's more on, you know, your, your point earlier of saying, you know, it, fairness, um, because we have a few of these, and, and lately we have on applicants. Um, Jerry, is it more 
proximity to the business to the highway district in in this case because I, I you know I'm at the flower market a lot you know they're they're you know they're in the back they're neat um, you know do, it, is that a difference in in your eyes <clears throat> if they're at the flower market and they have they have their business operating out of the flower market and that's their and that's the illegal business address I do not have an issue with that okay so it's uh, I, I don't want that's how I wanna... feel that's how I feel but I just wanted to hear it from Jerry because like I said I I think it's different when you're changing you know the 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 visual landscape of something that's very close to the road and you know could potentially be an eyesore um, as opposed to something that's you know, kept neat and, um, you know, and in, in, in this case is a win-win for local businesses. Peter from Boston Flower Market has always been very adamant about me staying out back, neat, um, out of the way, not visible from the street, never let me park vehicles out front, uh, just always out of the way, out of sight, out of mind type of deal. He, he never wanted me to be soliciting on the main road. So Jerry, to, to be, if I might ask, so is this, is this, I know there was a mention of the word fairness earlier. Um, so is the question here really coming down to the idea that because it's off main, it doesn't, seemingly or to my understanding about any residential interest it doesn't create any kind of visual for lack of a better word eyesore kind of idea but the the difference between boston flower and bernardo or any other interest that's landscaping in nature is the is the storage of the trucks so is this is this effectively what we're kind of working within the lines here for because mm -hmm. you, if it, I, I'm not, I'm, I, there's, there's obviously a differentiation between landscaping and the flower business, um, but they don't, they don't, other than maybe del have delivery trucks, I mean, uh, vans or whatever. I mean, I'm not too sure where they put their vehicles and how many they even have for that purpose. But is this just a question of lining up trucks on the back lot? and just kind of knowing they're there, but not believing they're causing a quote unquote problem for the nature of the, of the location. Whereas another interest might approach us down the road and not literally, but figuratively and, um, and ask, well, you know, you know, where am I gonna put my, like my trucks are gonna be behind the building too, and you won't see them. Is it kind of out of well, sight, out of mind, or, or what do we? Well, to... Bob, there's, there's. I would say one thing I would want us to remember and to sort of focus on is under the highway business district, um, landscaping is allowed by special permit with our approval. Storage of trucks is not allowed at all, so we don't have the the right to approve that as a board if that were the sole function. So I think the, you know, uh, there are, I think the sort of a layer of issues in my mind, one is what's the business that we're approving uh, or considering in a landscaping business that has trucks involved with them could be allowed as a special permit item. But if it were not a actively practicing business at that location, and they just wanted to have their trucks stored there, even if it was in the back behind a fence, that's not something in that we have, I think, the, the authority to grant in the highway business district. That's just in, in that's terms a, of how I read our bylaws. Thank you, because that's exactly what I'm trying to narrow here for me. And I, you've just done it. Thank you. Madam Chair, may I ask some questions? Of course, Maria, please. Mr. Bernardo, how many trucks do you have back there? Um, I think six. Okay. How often during the day are those trucks out working actively? Every day. Okay. 
Um, so, so would you say, the, do they sit there for long periods of time or are they mostly out on the road working? On the road working, only at nighttime they're parked there. And pursuant to your business, you are required to have trucks, I would assume, because it's a landscaping company, right? I wish I didn't guess. It's pretty expensive. Yeah, um, but you do have to transport trees and whatever else you have to do to plant, right? Yep. So it's part and parcel to your business. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not because you're storing the trucks, right? No. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. And I think that was you know, what we we're trying to better out. Um, another thing I will raise, and it's the requirement for anyone who's bringing a business um, in the highway business district, it's subject to um, review of any of a plan by CPC. So any approval we give would be contingent on them blessing your 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 layout and your plan. They so um, I would like to just see a. Yeah, I know you'll have to do it for them, provide some sort of formal plan, but I would like to see what, where everything goes. And given that it's in conjunction with your business, I would be inclined to, to support this. I think um, um, would love a, a, just a little more input uh, from you on what this, on how it, how it works on the land. Um, do we have any, any uh, questions from neighbors or abutters? while we're here. Right, well, that makes that part easier um, or faster, I should say. So um, what I would be in inclined to do, again, uh, open to the whole board here is to say, let's, um, Continue this to our next meeting. If you could submit to us, um, you know, a, a plot plan. It could be a, you know, with doesn't have to be a full blown architectural, but just a sketch of where things are going on the property. So what what part you're leasing, what you're using, and what your layout is. I think that would be very helpful for us, so we could see where tr where trucks go. Um, do you have any other? Well, I. Yes, you can't. I was going to ask if you had any storage of mulch or materials on site. But that's no, not. Oh, he allowed. does. I have to buy it from him. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a uh, works out well for yeah. uh, everyone. Okay, so no, no outside storage of the materials for you. If if anyone's doing it, it's flower market, and that's out of his business. <laughs> that that's his. Well, uh, <laughs> Jerry can put that on his list. So, Mr. Bernardo, is there any other questions you have of us? Because obviously, if if we're going to continue the matter over for second uh, second presentation, if you will, just to make sure we can move on this without any further I delay. I guess the only, the only question I have is, do I like? sketch it, I get the plot plan from um, the town hall and then I'll just sketch my square that I typically just park and run my business out of. Is that what, I, what you're looking for now or? That would be helpful if you can show if there's any fences. Um, when do, you do, least But it, don't we have pictures that were already kind of sent from Jerry? I'm just, I'm really just tucked in. Photographs, like but I don't 30. know. I'm sorry, what? I'm only really like tucked in like a 30 by 30 in the corner. I mean, not pretty. Excuse me, the pictures I only took are, are from basically the parking lot. I didn't go towards mm -hmm. the back of the lot and take pictures of those. Okay. Um, I did, uh, I, just, just so I could clear this, um, I did explain this to you, and I think it was your wife that yep. needed a plan such as that and to come with that plan, um, in which I explained that to everybody. And uh, um, just just make sure you bring that. Okay. And if you have it earlier, just email it to Kathy and she will include it in our package. So we ha all have it um, remotely. Although unless the state votes to extend the remote meeting um, statute, well, they're supposed to vote by midnight um, or do it retroactively. We have to go, we have to go in person. Yeah, the Senate put it, the Senate put it this afternoon 
uh, in the, the bill that will probably get done tonight before midnight, extending to <laughs> March 31st. All right. We will know um, by then, but okay, that yeah. sounds good. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I don't know how, what your lease arrangement is with the flower market, but typically a lease has, should have the area that you're leasing described. Um, maybe it was done more informally. It, it would, we have obviously a lease with him, but it's more so run a business behind his building. There is no, like, I don't have a set like spot right, right mm -hmm. there. I mean, he didn't say you're stuck here. It was more so park back here, make sure the problem with that spot is there's golf balls that fly everywhere. So I just kind of <laughs> tuck myself in a corner and that's where I am. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get ice cream every day, so that's pretty good. Yeah, it works out well. That's kind of there you go. it works Pros out well. And cons. Yeah. All right, that's that sounds great. Thank you very much. I think this is um, for me. It was very helpful to hear from you what you're doing and what you're you want to be doing because we're um, you know we want to support businesses, but we also we've got a set of bylaws we have to I'm sure I work with as well. Um, if you would like to request an extension of this public hearing until what was it August? What is that, Kathy? What are we on? Remind me. 11th. August eleventh. Do, do, you need to. I, I request yeah, if it. You would yes, you need oh. to request. It. Just ask us. Would, would you? Oh. <laughs> would you extend? <laughs> it would be our pleasure to oh. extend for <laughs> you, but. Procedurally, you need to make the request. So thank you. Um, thank you. We'll look for your plan and we will revisit this next month. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very right. much. Thanks. Thanks. Have a Thanks. good night. You too. All right. I think next thing we have up, we have next thing I have in my packet is one forest street for Mr. Jay Weaver. We have a Mr. I see an Amy Weaver. That sounds very, might, yep. be, might be related. Um, I, you're going to need to check your audio, Ms. Weaver. That was not coming through, but I will open the hearing. We have a virtual public hearing will be held Thursday, July 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Jay Weaver, 1 Forest Street, North Reading MA, map 68, parcel seven for a variance from the size and rear setbacks to attach their existing garage by adding a breezeway between the garage and their house according to the requirements outlined in the dimensional and density regulations of North Reading zoning bylaws. And here we go, uh, one open hearing, Ms. Weaver. We have some plans here, but would you like to just tell us briefly what what you guys are planning on doing? Yes. Can you hear me okay now? Yes. That's better. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for um, rearranging those. So we have an existing house and a detached garage. What we would like to do is connect the house to the garage. Um, our architect called it a breezeway. So that's what we're going with as far as breezeway. What it would do is put a master bedroom suite above the garage, um, put a laundry upstairs um, to the left of where the detached garage is, and then expand the three existing bedrooms um, for our needs. I think if you go down another slide, it would have sort of the proposed layouts, if that helps. That's the basement. That's the breezeway. There we go. So um, the plan would be, again, for a master bedroom above the garage on the right. Uh, we would have... Uh, a walk-in closet and a uh, master bath. And then to the left of that area, we would have uh, a laundry room and uh, we have a couple kids. So it would be a bathroom for the kids 
Uh, and that would then be an open to below. That says open to below in that image right there. And we would take down the wall between um, two of the existing bedrooms. Uh, on the bottom side of that, that, that would uh, remove the closet that is between those existing bedrooms and create a larger three bedrooms space for us. And that's pretty much it. Unless you have questions, I, I can help answer. Yes, and I think we have at the very end of your packet, there's a plot plan showing the existing dwelling and the existing garage and the setbacks. And let me see if I can see it on my screen, blow it up a little bit, my other screen. Um, do you want to see the plot plan? Uh, yes, please, for the setbacks. It's very small. Um, it is very small. Can you blow that up at all? Um, let's see. We have a new system, and, and it isn't allowing me to do that anymore. What? It on my home screen too. My other screen. What about the little plus sign to the left? Yep. Okay. Thank you. You got it. So your parcel lot one yep. and parcel B is someone else. Is that right? That's so another house on Salem Street. It, that's that's right. somebody else. Yeah, parcel B is someone else. And, and there's a barn in the way back of your property? Yes. Is that right? Is that one? Yep, still our property there, yep. Okay. And I am having trouble reading those setbacks from the so garage. I put, I put in pencil what okay. I believe it is. The, 29, yeah, 24, and 29.4. Am I right, Amy? Yes. Okay. And that's... Okay. So those are, are all... Is there another street that goes on that side, or are those all side yard setbacks? There is a street over um, a few parcels. Yes, Mom Road. Mm -hmm. Yep, comes um, out on Kupara Street. Three uh, parcels to the right of mine. Three small parcels to the right of mine. I'm not sure if you have the assessor's map that might make that road a little more clear. No, I don't have it. Okay. Oh, I yeah. did not see that in our Gary and packet. I were There's doing it today, and I thought they knew the rear, but I didn't realize this was part of their property. So he feels as though they only need a side setback. That's this is what I was it. just trying to trying to confirm. If you um, on the very upper right hand corner of the plan there's a locust plan a tiny little thumbprint locust plan which shows this lot which is sort of a, a pork chop lot but they're built in the front and then there's another there's additional dwelling lots to the right and the left um so yeah i think that's um and what's our are we gonna R A or sir? I'm R R. R R. R R. Zoning district R R. I don't I don't really know what that means. Residential rural. Rural. And you have a a twenty five foot side setback, and if that's the case, you are just we can um, 
you know, if I'm reading this right and everyone pitch in here, but I think you're just one, potentially one foot over on that, the corner, the closest corner of the shed where it says 24. Is that right? That's, that's what I would consider the side, yes. I don't have a, an issue but, here. Any <laughs> but that, that, uh, that setback, the 24, like, in other words, the only thing that's going to be added that's going to run, most of the construction is going to be between the, the main house dwelling and the, currently the garage. And th but there's going to be a flight of stairs added to the as you look at the front of the house from forest there'll now be a flight of stairs added correct that would be On, inside inside of the breezeway so um i'm looking at the plan the existing front elevation um and am i that flight oh, of stairs I, I think oh to the right of the of garage doors i mean as you face your garage doors is there do those yes. stairs exist now? Yes, there's a existing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know. I didn't. I thought that was part of the the change, but that's fine. Okay, thank you. All right. I mean, there's. It doesn't seem like any of the existing setbacks are, are going to be modified. Everything's going to be between the building, the existing okay. structure. All the new construction will be in between those two existing buildings. Yes. And so there's no increase in the footprint of the garage. What was the garage portion? It's the same footprint. Is that right? The garage will stay the same. Yeah. We're just okay. connecting the two. With yeah. sort and of when they were separate, you didn't need a variance because you can have a standalone garage closer to a lot line right. than a contiguous building. Do we have anyone? Um, any abutters who have questions or comments? Yes. Can would you hear you me? Your name and would you give your name and address for the record, please? Sure. This is Marie LaRose. I live at 3 Forest Street. And I am to the, I guess if you're looking at the house, I'm to the right of the garage. Mr. Ms. LaRose, nice to have you this evening. Thank you. What would you? Share with I us have, what questions, have, concerns. No concerns, no issues. I think it's a viable plan and I think it's fine. I have no problem with it whatsoever. Well, I've been living you. here thank over 20 something years next to them and it's absolutely wonderful neighbors. Likewise. Love to hear that. Thank you. That's, that's, thank you for taking the time to come on this evening and share your support. That is you're welcome. Neighborly, we like that. Anyone else? All right. Um, I'm gonna have my my board let you guys um, make a motion and, and vote on this. I will step out. Remember, Maria can stand in for me on this one. So is there any, any further discussion from the board? Maria, Vincent? No. No. Uh, so um, I'd like to move to close the, um, the public hearing and with regard to no further questions from the board to close the board's um, participation in this. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion with regard to the variance request regarding one Forest Street? Yeah, I'll move to grant the one foot variance to the northeast side setback uh, to attach the house in the existing garage with the breezeway <clears throat> um, at 1 Forest Street, North Reading, Mass Map 68, Parcel 7, in accordance with the dimensional and density regulations. Thank you. 
Sorry, I have a Thank comment. You. Oh, go ahead. Thank sure. You. Yeah. Sorry. So I think it was not just the one foot from the side. It, I think it was also the 39 from the house. Does that, or no, the 39 goes all the way to the back of the property. So the 39 is also a side. Okay. The 24 is the only, the 24 is the only question there. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, once we agree <laughs> on something, I wasn't going back and no, uh, nice. <laughs> that's, that's good to double check, especially when you have an odd shaped lot. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Um with regard to the motions um put forward, um all in favor. Vin Raguchi, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Bob Green, aye. Um, thank you, board. Um, so, um, Ms. Weaver, um, motion is granted and approved. Uh, after the, um, you can, after the regulatory um, pending period, um, you're more than welcome to get a copy of the final order. Uh, that during that period, um, any objection or um, or um, request uh, in in op in a, a, against it uh, could be filed, but failing that, um, uh, the uh, the order will be um, um, formally um, entered and allowed. So, I think you're all set. Do you have any questions for the board? Uh, nope. So in 20 days, I'll go to the town hall and just see if everything's. Still good? Printed in, printed in, and on paper. Yes. If yeah. there are any when you, oppositions, will I get notified, or should do I? You will. You okay. will get. <laughs> you will be alerted. You'll be notified. And when you do pick up your variants, you want to record that with the registry, so it's on record um, in your title. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Well, good luck with your addition. It sounds looks lovely. Thank you. Thank you, board. Thanks, Marie. You're welcome. Welcome. Good night. All right. So, Madam Chair, uh, you're going on to do, are you off hearing or are you just um, uh, awaiting your eight o'clock matter? I am standing by for that. So, okay. why don't um, you open this next one and I will, you, know, you, you three can lead off and I will participate as, as I'm able. How's Fair enough. Um, the next matter um, with regard to um, appeal, appeal to a decision by the building commissioner regarding 110 Main Street um, filed with the board, uh, the petition of Sean Ferris as representative for RECR Real Realty LLC regarding one of uh, 110 Main Street, a decision of the building for the time table to comply at 110 Main Street, um, map 24, parcel six, North Reading. Are uh, any of the parties to the uh, application uh, with us tonight? That would probably be um, more particularly very likely Reading Lumber as a uh, resident at 110. Um, uh, he's mute. Uh, oh, Mr. Stroud is, is muted. Hey, Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi, uh, Mr. Stroud. Great. Good evening. How you doing? I'm, I, I work at Reading Lumber, yes. James Stroud. Uh, so, uh, a, a cease and desist order um, was sent to you uh, dated May 2nd, uh, 2022 um, from the, uh, the building department, uh, North Reading. Um, if I might, and for the record, um, I'll read this, uh, the cease and desist order. That being again, addressed to Reading, letter, Reading Lumber, uh, care of, in this case, Charlie Strout. Regarding 110 to 124 Main Street outside storage slash every equipment 
Dear Mr. Stroud, it was noted that you have many pieces of heavy equipment at left and right side of the front of the above subject property. The left side of the property is now encroaching onto Route 28. At the same time, you have storage of goods at the left front of the property. Looking through your property file, do not see where you have permission from CPC or the ZBA for storage of outdoor materials in this location in accordance with the town bylaws, chapter uh, 200-39. Uh, states in part that follows outdoor storage of materials and supplies is prohibited unless it's specifically approved by the Community Planning Commission through the site plan review. Uh, paragraph, therefore you are in violation of the town bylaws, section 200-39 for vehicle storage, no use classification as listed in the 1997 North American Industry Classification. System is permitted in the Highway Business District, which is not listed and therefore considered pro prohibited as per section 200-32. Furthermore, as previously mentioned, you were in violation of 200-39A to uh, F2. You must discontinue this use and remove all storage and heavy vehicle forthwith. As such, you are hereby ordered to take action to remove the storage of vehicles and merchandise from this parcel, except this for storage provided for in your approved site plan dated uh, April 16th, 2021, revised May 1st, 2021, within 30 days of the date of the story. If you fail to comply, town reserves the right to initiate fines and illegal action against you to compel your compliance. You have a right to appeal my order to the zoning board, zoning board of appeals within 30 days of the receipt in accordance with uh, chapter 40A, section eight and 15 of the Mass General Law. Sincerely, uh, Jerry Knoll, uh, building commissioner, zoning enforcement officer, town of North Reading. Um, Mr. Um, Strout, how are you? Uh, we'd welcome um, uh, some conversation, and I know Jerry's on uh, on within the meeting as well to uh, clarify for the board and those listening and viewing uh, what seems to be uh, more specifically, most specifically, the problem. Yes, yeah, so I, I wanted to ask for a continuance to next uh, till the next meeting. Okay. Um, if I uh, just for purposes, if um, I. And I don't. I don't know if the board will have a problem with that. Uh, the purpose of the continuance is it for? for... Uh, Charlie Stroke couldn't make it an emergency, and his uh, lawyer couldn't uh, make it either to the meeting tonight. Okay. Uh, is the August eleventh uh, enough of a, a continuance time for oh, yeah. um, both Mrs. Trout and and counsel? Yeah, should be no problem. Okay. Um, any objection from the board to permit the uh, continuance? Uh, any, uh, I always forget to ask, uh, will you be available um, uh, from the building department, Jerry, for uh, August 11th? No, I will not. I will be, I will be on vacation. So um, uh, that I think is a, of interest to us because um, you have the most um, immediate and in, in-person um, in person understanding of the, uh, the situation and the history. Um, is there any, any thought to putting it further out to allow for um, commissioner, commissioner's um, uh, participation? From what I understand, Reading Lumber secured uh... Sean Ferris and uh, Sean Ferris basically was able to um, get a lease signed for the crane company that is there, which is the tree service company. And they will be moving out, correct me if I'm wrong, starting September 1. My concern is that it starts September 1 and doesn't go on till September 30th. It starts September 1 to have a lead time as to when, that, when that's going to be out um and so it doesn't languish um number two there are vehicles heavy equipment vehicles uh 10 wheel dump trucks on the right hand side um uh there is nothing in there in within their um site plan that basically allows the 10 wheel dump or the storage of any of that to that side um there's storage of pallets that they have to the left hand side um that they that is not just for display, it's also for retail and for sale. They cannot have storage in that area. 
and speaking with with um, with the town planner, she is in full agreement with that. Um, they can have, and they do have a display of goods at the sidewalk that is allowed. So I spoke with their attorney in depth and their attorney is basically willing to meet with Danielle and myself um, to discuss the heavy vehicles on the right-hand side and also the storage that th that is currently there and which I think it presents its presents an issue um, on the left hand side. Um, with that said, I would like to know um, how, how we're going to go about this first off um, with with a continuance. I don't have an issue with the continuance, but I do have an issue with with the lead time of that September 1st lease date. And I think uh, Mr. Sean Ferris, I think he may be on here, he may be able to speak, speak to that. Uh, Kathy, uh, Mr. Ferris. He's not muted. We have an issue with your audio, oh. Sean. That's now, now you're muted. muted. Now you're not. <laughs> Try again. Now he's muted. You're yeah, muted. I'm fine. Okay, Lynn. Okay. Sean, do you want to try calling in? No voice. Or you could try signing out and come back in. I think if you have his phone, can you try calling? Uh, yeah. Hello. Okay, while well, we're awaiting uh, Mr. Uh, Ferris's um, uh, rejoining us uh, by audio, um, while I have a moment, um, is is uh, the first matter that was before the board tonight, that being the petition of um, Cindy Aguero regarding uh, 475 Park Street. Um, is, uh, is anybody regarding that petition joined us uh, since the beginning of the meeting? Uh, while you're still with us, Jen, do you think it might be just uh, continue the matter? Yeah, why don't we continue that one? That's a special permit for um, for chickens. Raised. That's uh, in case she wants to come back next month. I'd be okay. I'm okay uh, allowing them to come back in. So let's continue that. So for the um, petition of um, Cindy Aguero regarding 475 Park Street, <laughs> um, that matter will be continued to our <laughs> August 11th. Um, meeting. So on on our on our current matter for one ten, um, I I hear Jerry's concerns and I think they're relevant. That would um, would like to have a schedule of how the uh, petitioner uh, is planning okay. to. Um, address these issues and the fact that they are willing to work directly with um, the building commissioner and town planner, I think is wonderful if they can work this out and they don't need our input here, that's fine. Um, this is framed as a uh, as a appeal of the building dis commissioner's decision and obviously, if they can work it out directly, that uh, we, we, I'm all in support of that. And I have um, Sean Ferris on the line now. Sean, if uh, you would like to 
open it up to him. Sean, can you tell us something about your the scheduling of your of your new lease and the the, the plans to relocate? Sean, can you hear her? Yes. She wants to know about your plans to relocate. Yeah, um, she's posting the relocated uh, the staff and transition on September 1st. Uh, they're trying to move out as soon as possible, but in that time frame, they'll definitely, you know, everything looking uh, normal and all that by the end of the month, guaranteed of and by September 30th, they'll be completely gone, and hopefully they'll be gone by the 15th, but it's a matter of getting, uh, you know, some of the stuff moved correctly and set up, so they have to see some of what they have and set everything up next that on September 1st, and uh, they'll be out as soon as possible. But they'll let them, they won't be there beyond the 30th. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. I, I appreciate that. Um, and we appreciate you working with the, the building commissioner to help bring, bring that into compliance. Um, so that's, I know that's one of, one of Jerry's biggest concerns or on that site and there are others. So Jamie, if, you and your the appropriate folks from your business can set up a time to meet with um, with Commissioner Noel and the town planner, um, hopefully in the you know, near very near future, and then maybe we can leave this on the schedule for August 11th, and hopefully. Uh, Jerry, before you're gone, we can get an update from you to consider. I mean, again, this is, um, if everything's in compliance, I, this essentially becomes moot, so. Excuse me, Madam Chair, but I, I want to I, I be sure that um, uh, Reading's Lumber's attorney is there to meet us as well. I want, I, I do want, him or her, I know it's him I've been dealing with on the site, please. That is a fair request. Yeah. And Mr. Stroud, if you could relay that yeah, to the council. Absolutely, he'll meet you there, no problem. Yes. Thank you. Great, all right. So why don't we continue this to August 11th? And then in the meantime, um, we'd ask the petitioner to arrange to meet with his council building inspector and town planner to see if they can work out a way to come into compliance and to comply with your existing um, site plan from CPC. Great, and we will see you and council and whomever else on the 11th. Great, thank you very much. Thank you, have a very good evening. Um, Are you all set? Okay. Um, I, next so the, item we have. Oh, so they decided. Have I gotten out of order, or my are these all seeming very familiar? Or no, it's uh, one forty. One forty two Main Street is the um, final new matter on the uh, and, agenda tonight. And Bob, you mentioned you had a. Um, not a direct conflict, but an, enough of a of one concern. that you would like to concern. You'd like to recuse yourself from this. So yes. Um, so thank you. Yep. So you may. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> of course. No, we appreciate that. Um, and here, so um, let me open the public hearing. A virtual public hearing will be held Thursday, July fourteenth, two thousand twenty-two, at seven p.m. On the petition of 142 Main, uh, Main Street Realty LLC, care of law offices of Richard G. D. Geralamo. Don't, if I misstated that, please excuse me, for a special permit to run a landscaping business and or stone business located at 142 Main Street, North Reading, MA, parcel 25, or map 25, parcel three. And we have a number of things in uh, violation notices, orders to correct in the file. I'm not gonna read each one of these, 
Um, but essentially, this is repeated and ongoing violations, not complying with the site plan. Um, there's an old site plan um, from CPC, um, storage of, of heavy equipment in the highway business district. Again, that's something that we've, um, we are trying to deal with consistently here. And the last letter that I see from Commissioner Noel in the file mentions that the gas station at 144 Main Street um, let's see, I make sure I'm getting the right. The gas station has recently been sold. Um, stated that he did not recall any language in his purchase and sale that allows him to traverse over his property <laughs> to 144. All right, so let's see if we have a petitioner here who can give us a little update on what's going on in the property um, with 142, what you're looking to do and take it from there. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the Board of Appeals, Richard D. Geronimo, I'm an attorney at 424 Broadway in Somerville, here on behalf of the applicant 142 Main Realty LLC. Um, this property is located in the highway business zoning district consists of approximately 3.5 at present the rear portion of this lot consists of a trailer park for residential mobile homes um, the portion of the pr property that we are before you tonight requesting a special permit for is an approximately 10,000 square foot fenced area um, at the front portion of the lot. And we are seeking a special permit to allow a, both a landscaping and a stone cutting business to operate on that, merely that approximately 10,000 square foot portion of the property. Um, the ancillary to that requesting that vehicles and equipment for that for those businesses be permitted to be stored on the property. Um, Madam Chair, the, the there is no planned development for this site. The owner is requesting a special permit merely for the use. Um, the two the two businesses that are in question here are not would not be operating, literally operating from this site. They are using this area primarily to store vehicles and equipment, both for the landscaping business and for the stone cutting business. Um, I think you would find that there is a history of automotive use at this, uh, which, date back, which dates back uh, to at least 1995. Um, the previous owners of 142 Main Street and the gas station at 144 Main, Main Street, which was recently sold, uh, was the Nazaro family. Uh, they operated the gas station and they also used this particular area that's in question to store vehicles uh, automotive vehicle, both for repair, uh, et cetera. So there is a very, very long history, almost 30 years of history that goes back here, at least, uh, that shows uh, a history of automotive use. We think that th this, uh, we think that the special permits that are being sought here uh, clearly comply with the conditions set forth in section 200-28E, uh, excuse me, e, uh, D, governing the uh, approval of special permits. Uh, section D recognizes landscape and horticultural services 
as a classification as well as lumber and other building material dealers as a classification. And again, these, you, the, these particular businesses are uh, not literally op operating from the site. Uh, they are primarily being used to store vehicles. Uh, similarly, we believe that under 100-39, the property, which is a 3.5 acre lot, uh, there is existing infrastructure to support this requested use. There is essentially no infrastructure that's needed other than what's presently there. Uh, we feel that this property, which is in the highway business district, you know, one goes along Main Street and sees a number of similar such uses along Main Street, all along Main Street in the highway business district, which obviously is a major thoroughfare in North Reading. Um, we do not see this use as creating any kind of undue traffic congestion, in fact, uh, or impairing pedestrian safety. As I indicated, the site is uh, fenced off from the rest of the park. Moreover, um, while in the past access was through the gas station, there would be no access to this lot from the gas station. So the only entry would be from the entry of the trailer parks. There would be no, um, no inhibition at all of the entryway or egress from the gas station to get into this particular lot. Um, these uses, uh, which we, you know, we would take the position that this, these particular uses are in fact less cumbersome than even the history of automotive uses uh, that has been here for at least back to 1995. Um, finally, I would ask you to consider um, that the uses which are permitted by special permit uh, are consistent, as I said, with other similar such uses along the highway business district. I think you can travel all up and down Main Street and you would see similar uses. We do not see this these particular special permits if they are granted to allow these essentially storage of vehicles and equipment in anywhere in any way impairing the um, the trailer park and and the, uh, the 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 for the residents of that trailer park which uh, which is in close proximity but again separated. So uh, I am joined, I believe he is on the Zoom uh, by Mr. Peter Piantadosi, who is a trustee of the uh, fact 140 Main Realty. Uh, and both he and I prepared to have uh, answer any questions which you or other members of the board may have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, you know, and this one is, unfortunately, it, it puts us in a, we're in a tough spot here. And I think you, you've heard uh, a number of the applicants that came before you. We, you know, in terms of our bylaws, the storage of heavy machinery is a prohibited use in the highway district, business district. It doesn't mean that it hasn't occurred in the past. And I think you've seen um, Commissioner Noel, uh, both from this property and the numbers of cease and desist violation letters that he sent, um, as well as to other businesses along Main Street to try to stop this pattern of simply parking and storing uh, heavy construction equipment, heavy vehicles on Main Street, as opposed to having an operating business that we're trying to support the, the retail business on, on Main Street. Um, you had mentioned that you're looking solely for the special permit on use, but any any business that's coming into the highway business district, as uh, we told Mr. Bernardo, uh, needs to go in front of a CPC with a site plan for approval and for um, with a, a plan for the layout that shows what you're going to be doing on site. I know historically there's been um, you know, going back years there's been an issue trying to get all of the old abandoned vehicles that the repair shop had 
next door behind the fence. It was, um, so I will allow my board members to speak, but I, I will say from the, from the get-go, I, I have concerns. Um, Madam Vince, Chair. Maria, let me get, see if they'd like to, to jump in and then you can, we can go back with some questions. Yeah, my concern is this, this storage issue that we haven't, I, I, don't, I don't understand that. I, we need to make sure that the vehicles aren't being stored there. And it seemed like almost like um, when Councillor was explaining it, that that is sort of part of the business. I'm just unclear on that. If I may, um, we would be happy to bring, if you would allow us to continue the matter, we would be happy to bring the operators of those two businesses or their representatives before the board um, and present to you what's specifically uh, in addition to storage of vehicles and uh, they may, uh, they would be doing at the site. I do not in fact know if this is considered heavy equipment. Uh, I do not know the size of the vehicle, but I that clearly we and I thought we I thought we had an understanding with the building department as to uh, what the use classifications would be. Um, the the storage of vehicles I think would, was an ancillary use uh, to the landscape and horticultural service. I mean, uh, you know, landscaping business, clearly there was not an intention to be conducting retail business there, but um, I think that part and parcel of that business is their ability to obviously store vehicles. So, you know, we could come back, if we could come back before you with the operators and present to you, um, my belief is that, you know, there would be activity at the at the site in the morning hours to uh, essentially move equipment off the site, and then probably later in the day when the equipment returns to the site. And similarly, I believe that's the case with the stone cutting business. Uh, but I th if if you would allow us to do that, and then um, if you feel it appropriate for us to go back before the uh, I think you said the CPC, Madam, is that, Madam Chair, is that? That's, that's correct. It's our, our planning correct. planning group. It's the Community we, Planning Commission. We would be happy to comply with that as a necessary step if you would allow us um, a short period of time to comply. And, and I think, you know, clearly we, we would have the specifics in place to um, to do that, you know, to, 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 to present fully um, a site plan through the CPC. That could be helpful. And Jerry, well, we have we have you here, and we may not have you, and we don't have you next month. Would you um, like to take an opportunity? And um, I know you have a you've had a long term relationship with this property. To give us any more color on this? Well, currently they. Currently, they, they're in violation of their site plan. I spoke with the town planner. Uh, we went to the property. They have an opening on, on a trailer park street side, which is not allowed in, in accordance to their site plan. And as Councillor noted, that he's willing to go back to CPC. So if he's willing to go back to CPC, he's going to have to address that. He's going to have to address the cement bollards he has uh, stacked up along the street because that's not part of his, his site plan. Um, I sent pictures to everybody as I send pictures to every property that, that we have. And this property has a, a lot of trash bags. Uh, the fence is all broken on the on the uh, garage side. And there's a lot of pallets and a, and a lot of debris that's thrown in there. And I, and I have pictures showing that. I just want to make sure that they, that they understand if, if they do get something like this, they need to keep this in, in a clean and, and safe manner. Um, uh, we can't have any harborage of, of, of garbage just as that with the, with the plastic bags that are there. Thank you. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. 
So I would say, I mean, again, we're, we're really looking for, to support businesses, but we, we're not looking for Main Street to be a parking lot and particularly um, parking lot for um, everyone's trucks and, and equipment. So I would say revisit your plan, um, talk to your, your business owners and talk about what you're thinking about, um, how you'd be using this. And then uh, the plan that you'd be taking to the CPC can submit to us as well, because you know, landscaping businesses are something that we are um, supporting but with, with conditions and we wanna make sure that the properties are, are laid out so they're attractive, so they are um, enhancing Main Street rather than just being a parking lot. If I may, Madam Chair, I just wanna add, uh, thank you and I appreciate that, add that this matter did go before the CPC back in 2014, early 2015, and I'm looking at a plan dated September 25th, 2014, that was prepared by LJ Engineering, um, which did propose, which did the proposed storage of vehicles at that time for repair and prepping for sale with approximately 10,000 square foot fenced area along the 3.5. Um, Oh, along the th in, in the 3.5 acre lot. But certainly, um, if you will allow us a short continuance, I will try to come back before you and address not only the issues and the concerns that you and others of the board have had, but, but the concerns expressed by Mr. Noel, uh, such as the bollards, um, the garbage bags, um, Etc. So, if you would, if you would allow us that, I would, I would be most appreciative. I have no issue with that, board members. Um, August eleventh work for you, councillor. Yes. All right, we're going to have another busy, busy meeting next uh, next month. All right, we will look forward to seeing your plan and seeing. I'm, I'm sorry, what after that, uh, uh, August 11th, if I may, Madam Chair? It will be September. We are typically the second Thursday of the month. Oh, I don't know if we have a date on the calendar yet, but let's just see what that would be. I, I don't know how often the, 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 this board meets if I maybe I would request if it was okay with the members of the board that rather than August 11th it be put over to your first meeting just so that we adequately have time to address some of these issues and concerns that were raised. That is fine. So um, I'm looking at September 8th, and I don't know how that all works with everyone for back to school and end of, sadly, end of summer travels. Is, um, is everyone back on the 8th? I think I am. Garbage bags, bollards. That would be sad. Starts by then, right? I think school's already in session by the 8th, though. So I think, think sadly, it <laughs> will be that maybe the first full week of, <laughs> of local schools for um so labor day falls on the fifth so yeah school resume that it? week oh. <laughs> i thought maria was crying <laughs> oh, I I I am. <laughs> okay. i'm joining you all right so if that's oh, boy i mean it, i you know uh, september 15th i mean the problem with September is it begins on a Thursday. So September 1st is Thursday and you get the long weekend. So maybe we should just push to September 15th, dead center of the month. I, I'm fine with that. Anyone, anyone have a preference? I think that's a good idea. I do. Works for me. Good call. Good call, Bob. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, we will 
host uh, continue that until September 15th. We look forward to seeing your plans and you again then. Thank you very I much. Think, absolutely. I think that is our last formal hearing. We have, an, um, we have a number of minutes from prior months and we have everyone here so we can actually approve those. Just lovely. Thank you everyone for coming. We will, um, let's see. So the first okay. set was April April 14th. Uh, the attending members was um, Chairperson Platt, myself, Bob Breen and Maria Lockhart. Um, uh, I had a moment to um, review them. In particular was the High school uh, illumination sign was permitted. Um, a home occupation permit was permitted. Uh, a second, actually, uh, we, we had a run on home occupation permits that night. And uh, we began um, the introduction of the uh, matter with regard to Fleet Bank, which got uh, subsequently continued. Um, I reviewed the minutes and I would move, uh, I found them to be complete and uh, well representative of the meeting conducted. Thank so you. So with Bob. that, I, I would move to, uh, I, I make a motion to accept uh, the minute, the minutes of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the uh, April 14th, uh, 2022 meeting. Lovely. I, Maria Lockhart, second that motion. Beautiful. Let's see, so all in favor, you said it was Myself, I will vote in favor. Jennifer Platt, um, Maria, Bob Green, and who, Bob. Bob and Green. Great. Aye. Thank Green. you. Aye. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Bob, you're on a roll. You want to keep going? So that brings us to uh, May 15th. Um, it was myself, um, Vincent, Vint, and uh, Maria uh, at that meeting. There was a motion uh, that began the the soldier that has become 340 Main Street. Um, both matters were continued. Um, a matter regarding um, the variance for the upgrade lighting, uh, again, regarding um, the uh, fleet bank uh, that was continued. Special permit uh, by Dr. Cox at North Reading Veterinary was removed as it had been resolved. Um, and an a, a addition in deck were uh, approved as was two guy garage, a uh, variance to connect a garage. Um, I had a chance to review the minutes as having attended and found the um, recitation in the, to be completed and representative. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for the May 15th, uh, 2020 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I'll second that. And Maria, you were the other participating member. Um, should I third that? What do I? Yeah. Uh, all in favor. <laughs> I would. I, favor. Uh, Bob Rain, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Vin Raguchi, aye. And that brings us to June 9th. Um, members present, uh, Chairperson Platt, myself, and uh, Vincent Raguchi. Um, once again, 340 Main Street as for both the petition for the repair shop and the construction landscaping business were both continued. Uh, once again, the matter regarding uh, the fleet bank and the, the, up, the hope to for variance to upgrade the lighting uh, was discussed and again, continued uh, to tonight's meeting. Uh, there was an approval for a permit for chick, uh, uh, to raise chickens, um, a home occupation business permit was granted and um, a variance for an addition to for Elvira Road. Um, I had, a, had, had attended the meeting and participated. I had a chance to review the minutes, found them to be complete and uh, fairly representative of what was discussed and conducted that meet that night. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes for the Zoning Board of Appeals for the meeting of June 9, uh, 2022. I'll second the motion. Uh, all in favor, uh, Bob Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. 
Uh, and Reducci, aye. And Madam Chairperson, you were the third party. Then I will vote aye as well. Jennifer and that Platt. closes. Thank you. There's uh, three minutes to met, resolve the minutes. <laughs> Thank you. And I just got an email that the House and Senate has voted to extend the remote meeting um, deadline until March 31st, 2023. So we can go remote unless anyone is eager to go back to town hall. Oh. <laughs> I, I think the remote meeting format works really well. Uh, both uh, for the parties petitioning for and uh, for, 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 for the members, but also for the uh, uh, contributions by neighbors and butters, things like that. I think it's just a, exactly. a simple convenience. That's, what's yeah. going to happen when we have that big, huge meeting coming up, though, at some point? About um, we'll, the, uh, we'll keep continuing uh, it. The 40B? <laughs> the the yeah. 40B? Well, that one was, I mean, that one filled the high school <laughs> auditorium. That was, yeah. that was big. So, um, you know, that's still in litigation. We're waiting to hear what happens with that. Um, hopefully it'll get resolved in the town's favor or the developer will come back with a plan that's um, workable. But yeah, but that will be interesting. <laughs> and, and maybe not before March, 2023. I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't heard an update from town council in a bit on that. So that's still in process. That's that, yet, um, so we will be remote again. I, it, it was nice when we occasionally got to see each other in person, but this is super convenient, as you said, both for us and for people, you know, for neighbors who want to be able to contribute or have a comment and not spend all evening sit, sitting in town hall. So that's a plus. Uh, Thank but it was you. it was it was certainly a positive to see Mr. Bernardo stay in and uh, see what was going to resolve with regard to storage of trucks for the landscaping business on. Uh, yeah, he's very interested. <laughs> yes, well, and 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 rightly so. I mean, I think and this is something we I I do want the board to be thoughtful of, and we want to be considerate and consistent. And uh, Jerry is working very hard to bring these businesses into compliance and simply because someone has been doing it for a long time doesn't mean that it's appropriate for whatever decisions were made were correct maybe at the time they made them but it's not anymore right so maybe they weren't correct um, at the time they made them saying. <laughs> and that could be true so I, I think it's um and i would like to get cpc involved and i think um, Kathy, I don't, sometimes we get requests from CPC to comment on a plan and there's not um, you know, a sufficient time to bring it in front of our board at a formal hearing, which is how we should be commenting on those. Um, but if all of these businesses are going to now go to CPC with a plan, um, you know, we want to see those plans and we may want to have a liaison from the board sit in on the CPC meetings to, to get some input because I think we really, I, we really are trying to make some progress and improvements on Main Street. I think the town planner and I know uh, uh, Jerry are very much taking the lead on that. And I just want us to I can, um, make sure we're supported that we don't see a plan with 10 trailers and dump mm -hmm. trucks approved. I can make that part of the agenda. Um, um, things going before CPC, if you want to comment on it, I can either give it to them or make you aware of what they're. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's so something, if it's a applicant that's in front of us both, I, um, I think it is helpful for the boards to be, to have some sharing of information and discussion so we're not work you know everyone's working in a silo of isolation i mean that this right the, the uh, it's hard to coordinate when the, they meet and when the materials are given in because i know you uh -huh. uh, wanted input from cpc on 172 park and they didn't
CPC too, that it's not, there's, we're looking at a use special permit, but there's the whole issues with site layout. And we, we look at that too, um, but CPC also has a, um, another job part of it. <laughs> They have the job to be reviewing and helping work out site plan and landscaping and make sure properties look good. So, um, and traffic flow works well and all those issues. So, um, where there's definitely some overlap between our boards and what we do. So it's, it's nice to, anyway, just it's a thought. Yeah, that would be good, I thought. So happy summer, everyone. Well, Enjoy July, the rest of it. We'll see you August. Hopefully people will have great vacation stories to share when we come back in a month. And you two, both Maria and Vincent will both be fully healed and better. Everyone be careful out there. Apparently it's dangerous world for my board. Mm -hmm. All yet, anything? Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Move you so to much. adjourn. Second. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Enjoy? Have a good night, guys. Appreciate night. it.